I, like many of you who follow me, am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. But I come here today to give you a hot take. Ever since the Hobbit movies released, I have constantly seen and heard videos like these. Um, and I, in the community, I see so much hate for these movies. Now, say what you will, there is valid criticisms to make on these films, but there are some things I feel have been blown out of proportion. Now, it's quite clear to most people that these movies do not live up to Lord of the Rings. But, do they have to? Looking back to Tolkien's work itself, he originally wrote The Hobbit to read aloud to his children, and then published it so other parents could do the same while Lord of the Rings was sort of The Hobbit for adults. The Hobbit as a whole is a much more whimsical story, and I believe that Warner Brothers gave Peter Jackson an impossible task, to make a 200 page children book into three nearly three hour movies. It's very clear that Warner Brothers got in the way of the creative process of Peter Jackson, and uh, actor Jed Brophy, with sick fucking name by the way, who played uh, Nori, one of the dwarves, came out saying how he could see that Warner Bros. was doing this to Peter Jackson himself. Well, I think that Warner Brothers kind of got in the way of, of Peter and the Hobbit. There was a feeling of unease too, because I've, I've known Peter for 27, probably near 30 years, and I can see that he wasn't the affable funny kind of relaxed person that he usually is you know if you jump in bed with the devil and they give you 600 million dollars you're answerable to their whims warner brothers love or hate them they're into franchises they're into building a series of films that follow on from each other to generate income and to generate merchandising and you know that merchandising is an ongoing thing none of them are auteurs none of them are filmmakers none of them are people that can actually look at a script and in their head imagine how you can actually get the best drama out of that and if you get in the way of that process, you're actually stopping someone from actually getting a flow on. And that's what I think happened. That's what I could see happening, is that there was not that same flow. You know, Peter would see stuff on Lord of the Rings and get, get this amazing idea about how he could shoot the next scene from stuff that was already happening on set. But if you've got people dictating what your day is gonna be, then that stops it. Originally, The Hobbit was meant to be just two movies and Warner Brothers stretched it into three for maximum cash flow, because that's what Hollywood's all about, I guess. People often complain about the book accuracy of these movies and the amount of added content and characters we got, like Legolas and Tariel, for example, but to that I say we wouldn't have got this fire scene out of it. I don't think it's that ridiculous to take a beloved character and add to his lore in a place that he already would have been at the time. It makes sense to me. I think it's interesting um, how they show him behave sort of differently than he does in Lord of the Rings. He's a lot more stubborn and you get little bits and pieces about how his mom passed away and stuff like that. And not to mention he has to deal with his douchebag diva of a father. He's also kind of sick though. It doesn't really bother me that they added these kind of things because Peter Jackson basically just had to spawn in content where there was none. And I feel like he did a pretty good job with the hand that he was dealt by Warner Brothers. Or the fact that Azog was like a mere mention and only shows up a couple of times in the book, like at random, and he turned him into a main villain who's actually pretty fucking terrifying. And to me, The Hobbit was saved by Peter Jackson's ability to adapt to this circumstance. And I think The Hobbit movies themselves are a perfect example of a film with great moments that get lost of, in the muck of everything else going on. There are many things you could say about these movies, but one thing you can't tell me is that they're not cool as fuck. All of the main characters in the Hobbit movies are always doing some cool, dope shit, and they look so dripped out while they're doing it. Meanwhile, Rings of Power. <laughs> or not to mention the fact that Martin Freeman is the greatest young Bilbo casting we'll ever see. And we got to get a glimpse into what Bilbo was like before the ring had began to take hold over his mind. And what the initial stages of it looked like. Mine. 
Now, one criticism I understand is some of the CGI looks pretty whack, but some of it also looks fantastic. Imagine showing some dude from like the 1940s the smog and Bilbo scene. That dude would probably go on to invent time travel so he could be alive to watch that. Now, I may be a bit biased for a couple reasons. Um, I pretty much view all of the people in my life how the dwarves view each other. The amount of camaraderie they display is the way that I like to live my life. Also, I was 13 when the first Hobbit movie came out, and I thought it was sick then, and I still do now. But I do understand many of the criticisms people have, but I fail to see how these are terrible movies, as many claim them to be. I enjoy rewatching them quite often, but I will say that the first and second movies hold up much better than the third one. I'm not here to claim that these movies are fantastic or anything, I just feel like they, should, they could be appreciated a bit more in the grand scheme of things, honestly. While they're not Lord of the Rings, they're fun adventure movies with great moments, humor, and action sequences, along with an emotional scene here and there. Also, that dwarven music makes me want to die a glorious death for my king. I'd go to war so fast if this music was just played. And I thought to myself then, there is one who I could follow. There is one I could call king. My final thought with modern Hollywood milking the shit out of everything and remaking things left and right, my brain always goes back to how much worse these movies could have been. I look back to my other favorite franchises that are currently being destroyed. These movies don't really break canon or have any universe altering plot holes like say the Star Wars sequels for example. But hey that's a topic for a whole other video. Hell it's not even as close as bad as the Rings of Power. <laughs> but at least we got cool characters who are dripped out and always doing cool shit and absolutely stunting on orcs and goblins instead of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sitting here and saying because other franchises and other movies have terrible writing that we should praise mediocrity. What I'm saying is I feel The Hobbit was held to the Lord of the Rings standard when I don't feel that it was necessary. I understand wanting it to be as good as Lord of the Rings, but also Lord of the Rings is the epitome of filmmaking and storytelling. There are few films as well constructed as the Lord of the Rings series is, and I truly believe that if Warner Brothers did not force Peter Jackson to make three movies and instead allowed him to make two, then I would be sitting here today and enjoying them as much as Lord of the Rings, probably. Each one of the Lord of the Rings books is near a thousand pages, and The Hobbit is a singular 200 page book. And I feel it's sort of an impossible task to ask someone to give you three movies out of 200 pages. Do keep in mind, this is my opinion. I love these movies. I grew up liking them. Um, but I know a lot of people don't. And I feel that they're sort of underappreciated, kind of like how the prequels are with Star Wars. But again, that's another topic for a whole other video. But yeah, that's it for today. And let me know how you feel about the Hobbit movies down below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I'm all about, you know, embracing discussion. So um, please leave a comment and thanks for watching. Uh, if any of you are ever passing Bag End, uh tea is at four. There's plenty of it. You are welcome any time. <laughs> uh, don't bother knocking. <laughs>